welcome everyone. We appreciate you taking the time out of your day uh, to join us. This presentation is one that I have done for several years at SOLIDWORKS World, or now as it's called 3D Experience World. Uh, this is how to build and maintain effective design tables. Design tables is one of those unique features inside of SOLIDWORKS that not a lot of people talk about anymore, but still has a lot of power and a lot of capability to really help you out with your uh, design process. Uh, my name is Josh Altergott, like Bob said. I am the Senior Manager of Services here at CATI. All right, quick little thing on how we run a session. Bob gave you some of the heads up before on that. But basically what we do, we show you information on a slide, then we're going to switch and show you an example inside of SOLIDWORKS. Now, the examples that we're using today are simplified examples. They are not real world. They are built to focus on specific topics. And then uh, please put any questions that you might have in the chat. We do or should have some time reserved at the end of this presentation to answer any questions that do come up. All right, the agenda, it is a full one. Uh, we are going to start off by talking about design tables and part models. We're going to step back to the very beginning, configuration basics and design table basics. We'll talk a little bit about planning for a design table. A lot of what you're going to do when you're building a design table is really the plan for it. If you have a good solid plan, just like any design, it is going to work out better for you. So taking the time to put that plan together ahead of time is going to pay dividends in the long run for us. We'll talk about some different execution tips. We'll talk about bringing it all together with a specific example that we have. Then we'll talk about taking it to the next level. Configuration Publisher, kind of a subset of Design Table. Once again, a tool that isn't talked about a lot, but does have a lot of capabilities inside the software for giving us some different levels of control of our designs. We'll then talk about Design Tables and Assemblies, specifically how it is similar to Part Design Tables and how it is different from Part Design Tables. And then lastly, we'll wrap up with Design Tables and Drawings and cover some of the topics with inside of that. All right, so uh, the first thing is when to use configurations and design tables. That's really the question here for us today. So when we have a family of similar parts or assemblies, that is where we want to use a design table. And so when we look at the example that we see here in the screenshot, you can see there's 10, 12 different parts in there you'll notice they all have the same name. So what we're looking at here is this could really be simplified down. That airfoil could all be condensed into one part file. That plug could all be condensed into one part file. And we can control those with parameters inside of each of those parts. Rather than when somebody comes along and asks for a design change, having to change four or five parts, we maybe have one or two dimensions within a part to change and it updates the other configurations to go along with it. So our configuration basics. Different versions of a part within a single model file, like we were just talking about. You can see our little example there. So where do we find this? We find this in the Configuration Manager. Uh, it's that third tab over on uh, most people's SOLIDWORKS. You'll see the two little squares at the top, and it'll list out our different configurations. We have the ability to activate, add, or edit your configuration that is already created out there. Most common items that we are going to configure are going to be dimensions, feature suppression, and custom properties. Those are the three main things. There's a lot of other things that we can control uh, with our configurations, but these are the main ones that we're uh, looking at here. So um, our design table basics. So um, what are we looking at as far as design tables go? An Excel spreadsheet controls the configuration. The formatting of this is pretty basic here. Configuration names are down the left column, and our parameters that we are going to control are across the top. Now, one of the things that we do want to make sure of is we do have to be careful with syntax, and we'll talk about this as we go through the presentation today, 
what we need to uh, do, what our legal values to put in, and what are things that we want to watch out for along the way. All right, and then you can see a little bit of difference between uh, the two different configuration tabs from just having configuration to having design tables. You'll see that there's a tables uh, folder in there, which gets a design table put in. All of our configuration names get the little Excel symbol in front of them. Now, one other thing to note with a design table is those are embedded. Uh, the design table itself is embedded inside of the SOLIDWORKS uh, model file. All right. So if we just take a look over here, we'll jump over to SOLIDWORKS. Here is our basic part file. Basic part file has four different configurations. And you can see we're controlling very simple things with this. The names dictate what they do, uh, six inch with no hole. If we come back over to our uh, feature tree here, we'll see that that hole is suppressed. If we jump into the other ones, we have a three inch with a hole and a three inch without a hole. All we're doing is changing one value for each of those. So pretty basic setup as far as that goes. And we'll talk about, and we'll show you an example of that design table in just a minute. So the design table basics for creating and inserting a design table. It's pretty, pretty simple. Go to insert, you go to tables, you select design table. Now, you do end up with a couple different options when you go to insert that design table. You're going to get the option for blank. A blank design table is just that. It is a blank uh, Excel sheet that you are going to input the values into. Once you understand and know a little bit about design tables, this becomes very easy to fill one of these in by yourself, by selecting different parameters, typing in your different values that you want. From file, linked or unlinked. Some file isn't used that often, but it is an option for us. If you do have a design table from another part, typically if you copied a part or saved a copy of a part, you could bring in the design table from that. Uh, that way all the syntax and everything uh, comes in the same. Auto-create. We love auto-create. Auto-create is always one of our best options here because it does exactly that. It automatically creates our design table for us. And there's two ways that this can be done. If multiple configurations already exist, so we can see in that screenshot in the, in the center of the screen there, we have our four existing configurations. We tell it to insert the design table, and it builds the design table with all the different parameters that are unique to each configuration. So if something is suppressed, that uh, item gets suppressed. If a dimension changes, the dimensions listed in that design tail for us. So very easy to, uh, to do. The other option that we have is only one configuration exists. And if only one configuration exists, what SOLIDWORKS does for us is it lists out any dimensions or features that we may want to control. And it lists out those dimensions right there. Gives us all those uh, variables there. We could select those and bring those into the design table automatically. In this example here, or the screenshot here, we have said, hey, bring in the length, and it brings in that item for me, and it creates the default configuration, because that is all that is out there already. All right, so let's jump back over here. So we have our part, we have our four configurations. Like I said, insert, tables, design table, we get our options. Auto-create is selected there for me automatically. We'll talk about the options here in just a few minutes. I'm gonna leave those alone for right now. I'll go ahead and say auto-create. So what SOLIDWORKS is doing in the background, it's generating our Excel chart for us, or should be generating our Excel chart for us here. like we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty there. Actually, I went ahead and created it there for us. I'm actually going to jump in. I must have clicked a little too prematurely there. I'm going to go ahead and come back in and edit this table real quick. We'll talk about the editing options here a, uh, a little bit later on. There's our design table. So it was generated for us. You can see all the values and variables 
that are going to be controlled with our design table. All of our existing configurations are in there. Once I click out of that design table, which is what I did accidentally, that is going to refresh. We are going to go back to SOLIDWORKS and we can see our design tables listed here, our four configurations listed with the Excel symbol are now being controlled by that design table. So some of the options for our design tables. What do we have? Um, these are available when the table is created. We can go back and do an edit feature, which is what we'll show you here in just a second. And control. So um, allow design table parameters to be edited within the SOLIDWORKS model or block those changes. Basically what this allows us to do is we can make changes anywhere we want. We can make a change to a dimension in the graphics area or by editing a sketch, and it's going to update the design table for us automatically. If we choose to block that option, then the only way that we can change our design, the variables controlled by our design table is by actually going into the design table and changing it inside of that spreadsheet. So that's totally up to you. And I really say that depends upon the complexity of your model. Um, is where I would really say that that, uh, that option comes in there. Uh, allow and block, we just talked about those. Our other options out here, uh, add new rows for new parameters, new configurations. Those are all pretty typical. We usually want those to happen. Um, enable cell drop-down list. We usually have that one turned on. We're using the power of Excel to have a uh, drop-down list inside of there. And we'll show you some of those options a little bit later on as well. The one that we want to point out here is warn when updating uh, the design table. If this is set to allow, this is enabled. And whenever we try to modify a dimension that is in the table, we will see a warning. So with that allow turned on, you're always going to get that warning. And that's the warning that we're going to get there. So it's letting you know that you're going to update something that is in the design table. So we do have some controls in there that let us know if we're making a change that could have an effect on the overall model itself. All right. And the way to access those, once again, our design table is here. We can right click on that design table. And we can select edit feature from there. Here's all those options that we just talked about. Right. Our other options, new parameters, we did just kind of cover this a little bit. Um, in a new model, if a design table um, that has a design table, if we suppress a feature in one configuration but not another and come back in and edit the design table, we are going to see some of these uh, options pop up. Or if we change a dimension in one configuration but not another. Um, or if we assign or change a custom property to a configuration. The next time that table is added, we are going to see a list, including those features and dimensions. We can select to add those to uh, the table if we want. So you can see our pop-up that came up there. We have something called new configuration, a couple of parameters there. Now, one of the things I always like to point out and the bottom of that is a checkbox for show unselected items again. If you check this, anything that you don't choose this time will reappear the next time. If you do not check this, those options will not, uh, or variables will not appear again. So you do have to be aware of that. New configuration. Uh, in a model that has a design table, if we add a configuration, the next time that table is edited, we can see there that the new configuration is listed and available for us to modify. All right. So the basics of editing our design table here. What are we looking at? Uh, we have two options, edit table or edit table in new window. You saw when I, would, when I went in there real quickly to do uh, an edit to the table, I just chose edit table. Most of us now we have dual monitors Edit table in new window works out really great for that. Um, the table is edited, if we just do edit table, is edited in a sub window inside of the SOLIDWORKS graphic area. The downside of that, as you saw, if I accidentally click in my graphics area, it goes away at that point in time. I have to go back in and do that edit table again a second time. 
our SOLIDWORKS ribbons are going to be replaced with Excel ribbons. So we have all of our Excel functionality inside of SOLIDWORKS there at that point. If we do edit table in new window, you can see it opens up in a brand new window and we have the ability to do our edit there. Pretty simple, if I say dual monitors plays a uh, big role in this these days, I can put my Excel uh, chart or my design table on a second monitor, it makes life a lot easier for me. All right, design table basics, editing, to add a feature or dimension to a design table. If we want to add in, for example, um, the whole and whether it's suppressed or unsuppressed, we make sure that an appropriate cell is selected. So we're going to want to choose our uh, proper column, proper row, pick that cell, and then double click on a feature to add that feature in whether it's suppressed or unsuppressed. We can double click a dimension to add it to the table as well. We can double click on a feature to add it to the table. We can create new configurations by adding rows to that table as well. So let's jump over here real quick and do some of that. So I can come in here, tell it I want to edit the table. We're going to do it inside of SOLIDWORKS here. And we're just going to call it a four inch version. We're going to say four inch, no hole and we can take the description and all of our Excel functionality works fine in here. Copy and paste, uh, part number, we're gonna keep with the configuration so we can just drag that down. The color, we'll bring that down as well. This is your RGB value, so you do need to know that. We tell it what our length is gonna be and we tell it our state for our hole. We said it's gonna be no hole, so that is going to be an S for suppressed. We'll capitalize that just for good measure there. We'll go ahead and click out of there. And what SOLIDWORKS is going to tell us, hey, the design table generated the following configuration. Good to know. And there's my new configuration there. I double click on it, it updates, and the no hole is there. So really easy to go in and make those changes, add those variables in. All right, so planning for the design table. What can a design table control? There is items specifically related to parts only. There is items related to assemblies only. And there are items that are uh, there for both parts and assemblies. Now, this is found, if anybody's looking for it, in the SOLIDWORKS help, type in the word design table parameters. This is like the second one down, I believe. It says summary of design table parameters, and it will list out all these different items. So this tells you the syntax, what values are allowed to be input, and the default value if your cell is left blank. Now, one of the things I like about this is it shows us some of the little shortcuts and things that we can put in there. Uh, for example, if you look on the far right-hand side of the screen here, uh, the state of a feature can be suppressed or the letter S, unsuppressed or the letter U. So you saw in my example, I had the S and the U in there. It makes it easier. My column's a lot narrower at that point. I can put more items in. I can see exactly what's going on inside my design table. So, like I say, if you're building a lot of design tables, go print this out, hang it up on your cubicle wall or wherever you're working from these days and utilize that. It'll be a big help in the long run for you. All right, so when possible, build the model with configurations in mind. And what does this mean exactly? So we want to make sure that we dimension appropriately. A lot of times we just go in as we're building design and we throw our dimensions in here or there, not really paying attention what we select or where we select to grab those dimensions. So make sure you're grabbing the appropriate edges, faces, whatever it might be as you add your dimensions in. Avoid creating children to features that will be suppressed. If a fillet's gonna be suppressed, for example, you don't want to dimension to the edge of that fillet. 
because then that dimension is going to get suppressed as well. So you got to watch out for little things like that. You want to think about how complex is your project? How many features and dimensions are going to be involved? How many configurations do we need to create? Is the model complete? You got to think about that as well. Are there other things that are going to be going on? Is there any swooper, swoopy geometry, as I like to call it, with underdefined curves or splines? And then lastly, are there any external references to other parts or assemblies? I'm sorry, I said lastly there. Uh, a few other things here. Will equations be useful? And then if equations are going to be useful, what kind of equations are you going to end up using? Are we going to use SOLIDWORKS equations? Are we going to use Excel functions? Or are you going to use a combination of both? We all know how the design process goes. More than likely, you'll end up using a combination of both. But just be aware of that as you go through and build out your model. All right. Some of the other things that we need to worry about here is naming. So what features are going to be involved? And we look at this, we have boss extrude one, sketch one, cut extrude one, sketch two. These may mean something to you as you are designing the part, but you have to remember this design, like anything else, is going to live on for a long period of time. You may no longer be with the company later on. The next guy in line is not going to know what these mean. So we want to name them appropriately. So in this case here, you can see rod, rod sketch, pull, whole sketch. We're putting those items and giving them very specific names. What dimensions are going to change? D1 at sketch one, that doesn't do much for us. So what we want to do here is we want to name them. Once our features are named and our sketches are named, those carry over. So now we can go, instead of D1 at sketch one, we end up with pipe diameter at rod sketch it starts to make a lot more sense, especially when you go in and build out that design table. You'll know exactly what you are controlling there. Uh, some other execution tips, dimension display. When editing a table, we want to see the dimensions. Not everybody knows where to find those. So we can double click on a feature to display just the dimensions of that feature, but this can be a little bit tricky because this can add a feature to the table as well. So you got to make sure that you're, when you're double clicking on a feature like that, you uh, don't accidentally add that to the table if you don't need it, or make sure you delete that row if you want to. Easier way is we can right click on the annotations folder and we can select the option for show feature dimensions. And this will display every dimension on your part. It may show too many dimensions. So you can right click on any feature and hide its dimensions. So you can see there, we right click on the feature hole and there's a selection there for hide all dimensions. Now, one of the tricks with this guy as well, uh, if we come in here and do that real quick, we can come into our annotations folder. We can tell it display annotations, show feature dimensions, and my dimensions are being displayed out there. We can then, let's actually grab one of the configurations that has a hole in it. And hopefully we'll see a few more dimensions pop up there. We can come in here and we can right click on these. We can hide all dimensions and we can show dimensions as well. And right click and show. This is feature by feature. You cannot control select multiple features to hide and show dimensions. So that is the one caveat I will share with you on that. All right, execution tips, start simple. Design tables can get real complex really fast, so start simple. Go with trial and error, add a few key features in there, test it out, see how it works. Is it doing what you expect it to do? Add user notes where it's appropriate. Once again, these designs live on for a long period of time. By adding in some simple user notes, this is going to help anybody else out who goes to make changes to this part later on. So, and you can see, dollar sign user notes, these have holes, these don't have holes. Pretty simple. Don't add too much. 
I have seen it where people go in and add every single feature, every single dimension that is in your uh, model. Don't do that. Just add the features and dimensions that you want to control. Save a copy of the design table. You have the ability to right click when it's inside of your um, window there and save out a copy of it. That way you can keep a copy in case something goes wrong or in case you enter in syntax wrong. The last thing you want to do is make 20, 30 changes, go to close that design table and not take a copy of it and not have it update because one piece of syntax was out of place. Do not skip any rows or columns. Anywhere that SOLIDWORKS sees a break, like you see in that screenshot there, it will skip that information. Wherever that gap is, that's where SOLIDWORKS stops at. All right, so bringing it all together here, we'll talk about the pipe example. And this is one that was brought to me, this was brought to me years ago, but it still holds true to this day. What the customer asked for, they said, hey, there's 106 different sizes and schedules. Not too bad, we can build 106 configurations. Easy, right? Then they tell us that there's four different materials for each size and schedule. Well, this becomes 424 different configurations. So we see things start to grow at this point. Then they come in with the caveat that they want each size, schedule, and material in eighth inch increments from one inch to 20 feet. That's right, up to 20 feet. You do the math on that, it's 1,912 different length configurations. You take that, plus your 424 other configurations that you had before, you're all of a sudden at a point where your design table could reach over 800,000 total configurations. Now, Excel does have some limits. They've changed them over the years. But still, I don't think anybody wants to be going around with a SOLIDWORKS model file with 800,000 configurations in there. Your performance is going to be horrible. So think about those things. This is what we talked about by planning it out. Figure out what is going to work for you in this case. In this example here, we broke this up into much smaller file sets so that we could have a very small group of configurations for each one. So the other thing that comes into play, we have Excel. This is great. Why is it great? We can use Excel tools in order to make things happen for us. Things like formulas, drop-down boxes, conditional formatting, concatenations, all of these things can go in and really automate that design table creation process. So once again, a little bit of legwork up front makes for long-term benefits down the line here. And what does that look like? Well, we'll open up the one example that we have here. This is a saved out version of a design table here, and it's that pipe example. And what happens here is if we look at these different uh, entries that we have, we have a concatenation. So the whole configuration name is being driven by a concatenation of other items within that design table. Then we have certain things that are linked up with each other. So our length is equal to the cell above it plus an eighth of an inch. Our schedule, it's all being controlled here by a dropdown. You can see over here, our user notes, here's our schedule sizes, all listed out here. We can change one of these, so we can go up to from 40 to 80, and you'll notice all the schedules update, all of the configuration names update, everything's all linked together. This is what's great about this. And then we have it in Excel, so we just do something simple like this. We want to create another 10, 20 configurations. We grab that uh, row, we bring it on down. All the other configurations get created automatically for us. So that is where the power of the design tables and Excel really all start to come together for you. Gives you a lot of great options there. All right. 
We're going to go ahead and close that out because we don't need that one for her now. And jump back in here. So Configuration Publisher, you may or may not have heard of this before. It's a tool that's out there. It's been out for quite a few years, but it's a, it's a really neat tool and what it has the abilities to do. So what it can do for us, it creates a property manager to allow easy configuration selection when inserting the part into an assembly, downloading the model from 3D Content Central, and if you notice, the image that popped up on the left-hand side is very similar to the property managers we see when inserting toolbox hardware into an assembly, which is shown on the right-hand side of that screen there. So you can see our configure component on that left-hand side, we have our pipe diameter, our schedule, uh, it gives us information about that item as we put it in there. We get to choose what material. We get to put what lengths we want in there. So our problem of having 800,000 configurations before, if we use the configuration publisher, starts to take away some of that because they don't have to be all created up front. They can be created on the fly as we go. All right. So there are two types of configuration publisher files that we can create, and we'll talk about both of them here today. So the first one that we're going to look at is the single line table. What does this mean for us? You include all the parameters that might change, and this only includes one configuration line. We use dollar sign part number to control the name of our new configuration that's going to be created. So you'll see default, that's going to be the default configuration. The part number, that's going to be used to control our configuration. And you can see all of our other variables are listed out there. Now, we do have concatenate uh, name based on text and other cells. So very much like we just talked about here in the previous slides. And the, with the single line design table, what this allows us to do, is this is an unlimited number of configurations can be created. So you do have to watch out for this because there is a possibility of 800,000 different configurations being created for this file. We do have to take that into consideration. So what happens? We create our model. We create our single line design table. We right click in the configuration manager and we choose configuration publisher. And then what we get to do is we get to start assigning variables to go into that. So let's take a little bit of a look here into SolidWorks and show you what we're talking about here. We're gonna go ahead and close out some of these files that might be open already. And we'll open up guy here. And you guys can see I'm using uh, the Explorer option inside SolidWorks here. When I say I've been to SolidWorks World or 3D Experience World a few times and done different presentations, uh, you can see as this file is opening up here all the times I've been to World. So uh, it's been a few. All right. So what we have here. We have our design table. We also have property manager listed here. That's our configuration publisher. We won't go through the exact steps of doing everything. We will show you some of the basics here. So if we open up and edit our table real quick, it's going to go ahead and pull that up for us. It's once again showing us any parameters that may be out there that we haven't utilized. And this is exactly as we show in the screenshot. We have our default configuration. We have our part number, which is being controlled by some of our design table parameters, and then all the different items that we want to control within that configuration publisher. So what do we do with that configuration publisher now? Let's open that guy up and edit that feature on that. And you can see it's gonna grab our design table in the background there. And here's the interface for it. So our different attributes, we can create new attributes, either a list or a number. So you give it a name, you tell it what design table variable you want it to uh, be derived from. 
the type, whether it's a list or a range, uh, if there's any data that is a parent of it, and whether or not it is going to be visible. And you can see, we created these for each of our items here. So we had our nominal diameters that was controlled with the list. Our outside diameter, it does have a parent, and it is the, uh, the nominal diameter. So it lists out what that is. This gives us information as we go to insert this into our assemblies or other areas of SOLIDWORKS. So we know exactly what's being generated there. And the same goes on for each of the different uh, variables that we create here, all the way down to our length. And we actually have that list one here. Um, we will delete that last one that we created at, as we are showing the example here. Our length is the last one here. And this is really cool. This gives us the ability to put in our min and our max and the variable that we have of increment. So pretty neat tool that we end up with here. All right. So here's those different items. We just kind of ran through them. You can see each of them described here, uh, what its parents are, what the different items are. And you go in, you type in all the data that you have that you want to put in there and generate each of those, all of our different materials, our attributes for length, like we just talked about. This is what we get for our edit window. And the last couple things with this here is, let me just jump back into SolidWorks here and pull that config publisher up real quick. There we go. Other cool things with this, we have a SolidWorks preview. So you can test this out to make sure it is working exactly as you expect it to be. So you can tell it what we want our nominal diameter to be, what we want our schedule to be. It tells us what our wall thickness, it tells us what our weight per foot is. We can pick what material we want applied to it, and then we can type in what we want the length of this to be. So if I say 6.03, and I tell it to update the model, inputs out of range. So it even gives you a warning to tell you that something is not what it expects to be. So if I say 6.375, and I tell it to update model, it updates the model with the parameters that I put in there. So we can test these things out, make sure that everything is working exactly as we expect to. And there's also a 3D Content Central preview uh, option as well inside that configuration publisher box. So pretty neat as far as how we can go about building this out and what we have the options to do with it. Now, like I said, there is one other type of configuration publisher that we can generate, and that is the multi-line table. Now, the multi-line table, what this does this limits us to a very specific set of parameters that we want to control. It limits the number of configurations that can be created as well. So our full design table exists, and it includes all of the configurations listed in there. All right, pretty simple so far. So we create our model and our full design table. We right-click in Config Manager, and we go to our Config Publisher. And, excuse me, you will see that we get a little bit different look here than we had with our other one, where before we had lists, and we were able to pick out the different items that we wanted to do, what parameters we wanted to control. This is very specific. It has all of the parameters that were inside of the design table listed there, and then we choose which ones we want to bring in to that config publisher. So we pick the ones that are out there. It tells us what the design uh, table variable they are uh, related to, and we go from there. This is what we end up with for our preview here. And let's just jump in real quick, and we'll pull this one up. So, so a file is called the missing link with our config publisher. And you can see very basic. Uh, little link file that we have here, and it has one side with a hole, one side without a hole, 
and different thicknesses and sizes of that. So, and you can see all those configurations already generated there for us, already available. If we go to our property manager here and edit feature on that, it's gonna go ahead and pull up here real quick for us. All right. And what we have the ability to do here with this is we can add in the other parameters. We have our SOLIDWORKS preview. Like I said, same as before, except we have all of our options listed out there. We got our length, we got our width, we got our depth, and we can choose whether it's got a hole or no hole in there. It tells us the name of the configuration that's going to be created. You tell it to update the model and it builds that model out for you. So very nice. Once again, this limits the size of what can be created. It takes an unlimited number of variables out of play, maybe goes to what you just have in stock, what you manufacture or what you order from a vendor. All right, we're cruising along here on time. I'm gonna have to buzz through some of these a little bit quicker here. So design tables and assembly models. How is it uh, similar to part models? Custom properties work the same way. Our dimensions work the same way. Make dimensions, we have the ability to control those. Reference geometry dimensions. And suppress and unsuppress work in the same way. In a part, we suppress features. In an assembly, we suppress components and assembly features. In an assembly, we resolve components rather than unsuppress. This one always cracks me up a little bit. Why SOLIDWORKS didn't keep the same naming convention between parts and assemblies for resolve or unsuppress uh, beats me, but it's out there, and at least you know it's out there as well. All right. So these parameters are similar between part design tables and assembly design tables. These are the ones that we talked about before, and you can see a vast majority of the parameters are available for both parts and assemblies. How is it different from part files? We have to think about levels when we look at assemblies. We don't suppress a part feature or change a part dimension from the assembly level. What we need to do is we need to go back to the part level. We need to create a new part configuration. This new part configuration is where we suppress those features or change those dimensions. And then at the assembly level, we create a new assembly configuration. In that new assembly configuration, we change which part configuration is being referenced. So that's where we start thinking about those levels side of things. In the example that we show down here at the bottom, you can see uh, the very last line for each of the part files there. At the very end, you'll see uh, the configuration name listed. So the one on the left has a six inch no hole and the one on the right has a three inch no hole. It is still the same instance number. It's just a different version that is being shown there. All right. And our syntax for that is the configuration of the component name with the instance in brackets there. So that brings us to our second point of how it is different from parts. We have to look at instances. We do consider each instances or each instance. We might want to suppress one instance of a component that has multiple instances in the assembly. So basically what that means, I have three of the same rods or bolts inserted into the uh, assembly file. I may want different versions of each one of those to show on any specific configuration. And that's exactly what we show here. We got our two rods. We show different lengths being shown for different configurations. We include the instance number in the parameter row. So that's what we have there, showing up at the top. All right. We 
we put in um, our component name and then the number that goes in there. Now you can put an individual number in there. You could put multiple numbers in there. So you can see that second option there. We have one comma three. So it'll take instance number one, instance number three. We can go for a range as well. One through three, we just put the dash in between there. If we want all the instance numbers to be included, we go with the good old wildcard, the asterisk. You put that in there for our instance number, and it takes any instance of that uh, component or configuration and component. So how are design tables different uh, and assemblies different from parts? These are the design table parameters that are unique to assemblies. So you see it's a very short list compared to the other one that we've looked at, but there are a few that are specific to our assembly only. And we can see what's going on there. Uh, one of the main ones that I see that always pops up to me is fixed. That's uh, usually our first component that gets inserted into an assembly, and you can actually control that with the um, with the design table. All right, good deal. We were able to buzz through that. That uh, brings us up to our design table at the drawing level. So what do we got there? A model design table can be shown on a drawing sheet. And what does that mean for us? We select the view. We select insert tables design table. We can right click the view tables design table and it will generate that for us. What we see on the drawing should match what we see when editing the design table in the internal window. This is edit table, not edit table in separate window. So if this is what was shown at our part level, uh, or I'm sorry, if what is shown here at our, uh, this is what's shown in our drawing, this is what is shown at the part level, we can modify that. We can hide rows, hide columns, shrink up the overall size of what that internal window is to get to be down to that size. Then at the drawing level, you're going to see the image that you see all the way to the right-hand side of the screen there. All right. Now, how does this work if we jump into SolidWorks? We do have our little uh, rod with hole here. We'll go ahead and open that guy up. And we're just going to take one of our views here. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to go to tables. And I'm going to grab my design table. Now it drops it up here in the upper left. We'll bring it over to the middle. And like we saw in the screenshot there, it is large. It is not necessarily pretty. It is not what we want to be. So how do we get back to cleaning that up? I can actually just double click on that design table and it opens the part file for me. It opens up the design table at the same time. Ask me what variables we want to bring in as it should. And this is what I see here. So I can come in here and I can shrink this up. If we don't want to see um, certain items, we can bring this over. So we can go over this one here. We can bring this up here. We can scroll down so we don't see that. And we can move this around to get exactly what we want. And we'll actually Scroll this over one more here and bring this over one or two clicks, whatever we want it to be. There we go. I click on that, updates my design table. We tab over to our part and we do a quick rebuild. You can see it updating our design table there. And there we go. There's our new improved and what we want to see on the drawing side of our design table. All right. So not a lot to cover with drawings. Basically, we're inserting them into our, uh, our drawing from our part file, and we can control 
what is displayed out there. Some of the final points as we talk about design tables and drawings. There is a Microsoft OLE limitation that might cut off some of the design table on the drawing. If you do run into that, change the font size, change the number of rows that you're displaying, uh, at that table, make some adjustments, column length, uh, or column width, row height, all of that, and get that and see if that can address the problem for you. We talked about it, we showed it. If you double click on the design table uh, at the drawing level, opens the part, brings you into uh, the edit table uh, command window. And then one of the other things I like to point out, obviously what I just did was shrinking up that design table. Not ideal if you're still in the middle of making design changes or want to go back and uh, see that whole design table. So you can actually create custom views in Excel to show different versions of the design table. I've had people tell me that they create a, uh, a second tab that references back to the first one. One is that they use one for displaying on the drawing. They use the other one for editing the, uh, the part itself and making changes to that design. All right. So that pretty much wraps everything up here for the day of what we want to see. Like we said, we started off talking about design tables in part models. We went through configurations and design tables, execution tips, planning, how we brought it all together. We took it to the next level with the configuration publisher and showed us the different options for that. Uh, we then went back to the assembly models, how they're similar, how they're different from parts. And lastly, we closed things out with design tables and drawings. So really take you from front to back of design tables and hopefully give you a little bit better perspective of what you can do with design tables and give you the ability to really control those designs.